Yeah, I like that. They got enough sense to know. Them they don't hurt. As bad as a lion is, you can build a, a boomer around you with thorns, and the lion don't even come get you. Don't get you. Ain't that something? Amen. Big as elephants are. Them little bit of thorns stop an elephant from trampling on your bone. My God. My God. Okay. It speaks to how, how awesome God is in caring for our life, in caring for our issues, in caring for our survival. Amen? <coughs> that we can take something so small. So it almost appeared that the thorns is put on the rose bush to protect the rose. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And he said, I'm not going to let you go until you bless me. And he calls a shaking in his hill. We call it a thorn to this day. Something that pauses you but protects you at the same time. Amen? So coming out of the book of 2 Kings. I introduced last week that this passage intrigued me from some of the things that I heard within it. So it was fascinating to go a little bit into it. I talked with Evangelist earlier during the week, and I just told it's just this this passage it got it, it's a really powerful meat in it. Amen. Second Kings, the sixth chapter. When you get there, say amen. Amen. Now, in the beginning of this chapter, it talks about a group of people that had migrated to an area and they were doing some work. By the riverside. Amen. They was chopping. And one of them, the axe hammer, fell off. And it fell into the water. Yeah. Big old piece of metal or iron fell into the water. And the, the person that was utilizing was so concerned because he said it was borrowed. You know, and when we borrow something and break it, we still held accountable for it, ain't that right? Yes, sir. And if you're true with what you say, you, you, you're concerned about how you're going to give it back. In this case, it wasn't just broken, but it was gone. It was in a place that's hard to retrieve. Because right. I, mean, I don't know how deep the water was. I don't even know how dark it was. But I do know it created some complications. In this case, he cried out to the prophet. <laughs> yeah. I, I can almost hear him in this one voice, but I need your help. I, I can't replace that. I don't have the funds. I don't have the money. Amen? Second Kings, the sixth chapter. I don't have what's necessary. What am I going to do? And how am I going to do it? I haven't even finished my work. The prophet broke a stick, tossed it in the water, and the iron floated out. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go there because I can hear something really hidden in what was hid and lost, but then found and brought to the surface. Amen. But he sent me down to verse 8 in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. If you there, say amen. Amen. And yesterday we criminalized a young man that wasn't that old. 29 years of age with eight children. Mm. When I talked to his mother, she said it's going to be hard. So the more I concur, concur. But she said, I got eight children that can give me inspiration. He left me with eight. I said, Mother, in my understanding, that's the angel of fire. The one that was chosen to set the dog away too. 
the tree of life. A cherub with wings, eyes all about him. Yeah, you're in a good position. Amen. In the eighth verse of the sixth chapter of Second Kings, it introduces our subject. When the king of Syria was warring against Israel, stop for a moment. There is war in the camp. Right now, there's war all around. Amen. Israel is preparing for a battle that they don't even know is coming. Amen. The king of opposition have saw some things in Israel that he want to take charge of. It says that the king of Syria was preparing, not Israel was preparing to go against Syria, but Syria was preparing to go against Israel. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yes. Not in a peaceful manner, no. but in a warlike manner to take possession of what you have or what you have. Is that right? Yes. War is not a good thing to the ones that has to fight it. Oh, it can have some good results. It don't necessarily mean it's a good time. Is that right? Some people are lost. Some people are damaged. Yes. Some people are broken down. Some people even experience some after effects from the conditions of war. Yeah, amen. Yes, yes, yes. amen. But one thing that I want us to know that war is serious. Oh, yeah. yeah, serious. When somebody is coming up against you, it's serious. It's not a joke. It's real. Ain't that right? Let's go in here. It says, when the king of Syria was warned against Israel after counseling with his servants, he said, in such and such a place shall be my camp. In such and such shall be my camp. Let's go on. Then the man of God sent to the king of Israel, saying, beware that you pass not such a place. For the Syrians are coming down there. Then the king of Israel sent to the place of which Elisha told and warned him. And thus he protected and saved himself there repeatedly. Therefore the mind of the king of Syria was greatly troubled. Greatly troubled by this thing. He called his servant and said, Will you show me who of who of us is for the king of Israel? <laughs> Make you think, don't it? Oh, yeah. One of his servants said, none, my lord, O king. But Elisha, the prophet, who is in Israel, tells the king of Israel the words that you speak in your bedchambers. Yes. Sound like God is a snitch, <laughs> Amen. He said, go and see where he is that I may sin and seize him, and it was told him he is in darkness. Watch this now. So the Syrian king sent their horses, chariots, and a great army. They came by night and surrounded the city. Yeah. When the servant of the man of God rose early and went out, behold, an army with horses and chariots was around the city. Elijah's servant and Elijah's servant said to him, Elis, my master, what shall we do? Elijah answered, Fear not. For those with us are more than those with them. Watch this. Watch this now. This is what got me when I was reading. I was really in this, Sister Deborah. I want you to hear this from over here. Because it has me to me. Then Elijah prayed the prophet, yeah. the man of God, because of what his servant had brought to his attention. Right. Right. Now here's a man that, that heard what the king was getting ready to do and wasn't even in the house. Right. But his servant brought to him yes, sir. Right. Right. that the enemies have encamped around him. Thank you, everybody. 
things don't ever say. I can hear from God to hear this, the key plot. I can stand in the presence of God and give out a warning to save God's people, but when the threat comes to me, my servant has to come to me and tell me that there's a threat. It makes me believe that the real issue is not about Elisha, but it's more about the servant. Amen? That's where I got stuck at. I said, ooh, this can't be about the prophet of God because he can foretell what's going on. Matter of fact, I know it because of what he said earlier yes. to the king of Israel. Yes. Watch out. Yeah. Don't go to such and such. There's some places God trying to tell us, don't, don't go, go to. Yes. Amen. Because yes. there's some people there sitting and waiting to destroy you. Yes. Amen. And the king had not even made it there. Matter of fact, he was prophesied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was, he was predict, predicting, you know, what was going to happen. My wife said, warning come before destruction. In other words, the prophet had seen what the plan of the king was all about. And he wasn't even in the room. You talking about faith in God. Amen. A foundation of hope that some people can't even identify with. Faith that speaks to somebody else's tomorrow, yeah. like it represented you today. Yes, sir. Amen. Somebody that might not have the faith that you have, but they have the trust yeah. in your word yes, that they walk in obedience to what God has directed them to do through you. Amen. Yes, sir. That means men of God, women of God, you have a greater role than sometimes we even perceive ourselves. Come on. Why do I say that? Because his servant didn't know what he knew. Yeah. But how many times have you heard, if I could just stand close to the cup yes. and act like the saucer, I'm going to get the blessing that the cup has. Right. So if I'm a servant of the prophet, then I ought to be able to get the blessings that the prophet, prophet gets. Matter of fact, Elijah spoke to Elisha and told him what to do so that he would get a double portion yeah. from what Elijah had. Yeah. Why? Because he was a servant of Elijah. Yeah. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. okay. Let me go back in here. Let's see again what he said. Because I want us to get this. Amen. And I want to get it. When the king of Syria was warring against, see, that's why I said it was war going on. Yeah. Because he said when the king of Syria was warring, yeah. he didn't say it was about. Yeah. He didn't say it was gone. He said they was warring. Okay. That means war was already in process. Yes, and this was one of his schemes and schisms that he had set up to attack. Yes, Ain't that right? Yes, sir. Now let's go in here. And the servant, and the servant, when he got up in the morning, that means he slept good that night. Ain't that right? He, they had went to a new city. They had settled into a home, and they was relaxing. And when he got up, he went outside, and lo and behold, you know, sometimes when we didn't know, what the man of God said was going to affect us because he was talking about somebody else that the enemy was going to attack yeah. and then they turned around and attacked us yes. or put themselves in position to attack us. It's kind of shocking to those that's with us to know that we're going to get attacked oh, yeah. and that people are actually thinking about attacking me. You think you're doing everything like God wants you to do? Everything is lining up. You're in the right position. You're in the right place. Everything is going right. And then you walk outside and see. Say what the word said. The man of God in verse 15, chapter 6 of 2 Kings says, When the servant of the man of God rose early and went out, behold, an army 
with horses and chariots was around the city to the man that served him. That's it. Kind of crazy. Isn't that right? Come on. The king was planning an attack against Israel. He was concealing it with his servants. He was planning to use special forces. Not just any old soldier. Those that was well trained in stealth missions. To do things undetected, under the cover of darkness, hiding behind bushes. You know a sniper in the military, we was talking about this the other day. A sniper in the military, me and Joe was in the car, and I said, Joe, a sniper, we can be sitting right here. And that sniper, a mile away looking at us, and all of a sudden, one of us just get boom. Because we was chosen in stealth mission to be taken out. This is what the king had planned against the tribe of Israel. Isn't that right? I know y'all saying, come on, man, go on. But it's a slow process because everything that somebody planned against you is not told to everybody. It's a select few. Everything that somebody has as an agenda about you is not revealed. It's in secret corners. Ain't that right? Yeah. Watch this now. He was planning to use special forces, special units, to carry out raids. Not one raid. Not one raid, but multitude of raids against the Israelite people. Ain't that right? You got to know that war is in progress. Don't be blind. Don't walk around here haphazardly, not really paying attention, because you can see it going on everywhere you take a step, everywhere you open your eyes, you can see war is all around you. Ain't that right? Yeah. It's trying to take our children. It's trying to take our homes. It's trying to take our lives. It's trying to tear down our communities. It's, it's trying to tear down our relationships. It's trying to tear down believers. Ain't that right? War on every side. It's in progress. Satan is also preparing a strategy to attack you. Oh, I said Satan. I mean the king of Syria. <laughs> Amen. I'm sorry. But he's prepared to attack by planning himself in such and such secret hiding place, secret dwellings that only his team know about. Ain't that right? Yes, That's what the word said. Such and such places. The king spoke in secret, not revealing to all the people, everybody not going to know. The one you think going to come tell you, they don't know. Because Satan know they on your side. Ain't that right? That's what the word said. But only revealing to who was necessary. The strategy of attack by raiding parties was to take place over a period of time. It ain't just one effort. It ain't just two effort. But it's a strategy of attacks. They're going to come at you this way. They're going to come at you that way. They're going to come at you from over here, from over there, from back there. They're going to keep coming and coming and coming and coming. Why? Because you are the enemy. How many people can point at themselves and realize you are an enemy of Satan? I mean, seriously. Amen. Verse 9 said, A man of God sent word to the king of Israel, saying, Beware that you do not pass this place. Yeah. What place? Such and such. Amen. Such and such is a secret code to believers yeah. to let you know that wherever you are, Satan is trying to get you. It ain't a certain particular place. It's an atmosphere. In your thought, in your mind, in your position. It's a way that you think. It's something that you're planning and preparing to do that Satan is going to attack. Yes, sir. I mean, seriously. I keep confusing that. I'm sorry. Watch this now. Beware that you do not know you do not pass this place. Verse 10 said, The king of Israel sent to the place about which the man of God had told him. Thus he warned him. 
See, when the prophet heard the king talking, he wasn't in the room with him, but he was. Amen? He was. He wasn't physically there, but the prophet had a belief in him that took him places that everybody didn't go. Ain't that what a prophet does? He received revelation from the Lord that speaks to you about the attacks that's coming on you or the blessings that's coming in your life. Amen? In other words, God uses prophets to forewarn you or, or prepare you for where God is taking you or where God is trying to move you from. And they're right there. For your good, not for his good, because he's already good. Yeah. Amen? Amen? But he's prepared to move you for your good. Wow. Or he's alerting you for your good. How many people really want to be alert? <laughs> if some coming, how many of you in here really want a man of God to come tell you, you better watch this? Watch out, watch out. Amen? I do. Amen. But do you know you got people out there that really don't want to be told? In other words, they said, I'd rather for it to just sneak up on me. That's crazy. Amen? In this, there is a subject in here that we haven't touched on that's important. Can I take my time? God sent a warning, but it took the king of Israel to humble himself from their position of authority. To be obedient to what God's warning was all about. The greatest at attribute to a prophet and to a speaker or a representative of God is your obedience to what God has said to you. Yes. <laughs> to that representative. It's not for the representative that spoke. It's for the person or the people that he's speaking to. Amen. Because God wants to reposition you to where you can have what God wants you to have and not what the world is trying to give you. Amen? So God sent a warning and if the king humbled himself, it would be shown by his action. He said, don't go to such and such. If you really take heed to what I'm saying, I won't see you in such and such. Amen? I won't even see your tracks to pass through such and such. Amen? That's what the word said. In verse 11 it says, Therefore the heart of the king in Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servant. And the king made. Yeah. Can I tell you that devil? The king is mad, Tori. Yeah. Why is the king mad? Somebody in the house and told. Some, 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 somebody in here. Some, somebody in here talking to somebody too much. Somebody ran their mouth, and I called them my private party. Yeah. The secret that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He called his servants and said to him, Will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? He answered his servant. You know, that has to be a deep thing for the king to believe that you are against him, or you're a snitch or a worker of. Yeah, somebody else, you a spy, right. and then he gonna ask you to tell me. Right. Come on, show me that. <laughs> show, me. Which one? show me what you did. Yeah. The king has that much power and that much fear. Amen. Well, he told the people, tell me what you did, Moses. Yeah. Come on, come on. I know you're working against me. <laughs> tell me. Which one? Isn't it frightening? Because what it leads me to believe that the king has ruled in a way to where if don't, somebody don't stand up and say, I did it, he's going to kill everybody in front of him. He don't want everybody out. Whether they right or wrong. So the king don't really care if what he's doing is for good or is right. He just want results. This king right here of Syria, he don't sound like a king that's working for the kingdom of God. He's working for his own king. Right. You got to be able to see when people working for themselves. Yes, yes, yes. When they establish a relationship with you and all they want is what they can get out of it. Yes, 
Everything gonna benefit them, but it ain't no benefit for you. Cause you like the you like the ham and they like the chicken. The chicken giving up eggs and the ham giving up his life. The king, the king is so self-centered that he has put a mindset in place in his kingdom that if you don't tell me, because I believe you know. If you got to die. So I wonder how many innocent people was killed because the king pointed at me to tell and I knew if I didn't point at somebody he was going to kill me. You did it! How many people were sacrificed to save yourself from the basket? Ridicule. Death. How many people Pride was used to blame somebody else. Come on, this, this thing, excuse me, let me go back in here. In 12, it said, and one of his servants said, this had to be a bold servant. Yes. None, he said. None, my Lord, he said. He had to have something in mind. Because if he spoke up and said none, no, 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 not he speak for everybody. He just took the attention off of everybody and put it on himself. Now he better have a good answer. Brother, he better have a great answer. Not just any old answer. He better have something that's going to make this king say, hmm, look at what you said. Let's go in here and see if he said it. If he had something. Amen. We're talking about war strategies. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Look here. He said, No, my Lord, O King, but Elijah. <laughs> Elijah. The prophet. See, the king already know that we represent two different kingdoms. Yes, sir. We already at battle with each other. And the king already know Elijah is not on his side, but Elijah has spoken before because he is a prophet. They already know that Elijah spoke in kings was appointed. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Elijah had a relationship with God to where people recognized his authority and his ability to speak on things that other people can't speak on. Yes, so they had knowledge about Elijah. So he pointed the freedom that somebody, the king, would know. And in this case, it was a reality. Because God apparently had shown him who he was. You can't hide when you're working for God. Amen. Amen. You got to be bold enough and ready enough to stand up on his promises by your faith. Because he promised to never leave you <laughs> nor forsake you. He also promised that people will have odds and attacks on you, but it won't prosper. Right. Ain't that right? Yes, so you got to be bold enough to stand. Yeah. Uh oh, let me go. Let me go. I'm sorry. We're taking up time. Amen. But the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bed chambers. There is no hiding places from God. And apparently from God's people. Amen. Because the prophet wasn't in the bed chamber, but God was. And when God began to talk to him, he began to reveal to him the things that were being plotted on inside the bedroom. Just what the word said. I ain't got the way it really hit me. I just want to share with what I was reading. And he said, go and spy where he is. You know what he really telling this man? Go find out where he is. Go, go look for him. And I can see this young man striking out with the quickness. Why? Because the king had told him, you done took, you done took the belt off of you. You know when you talk to your children, you finna give them a whooping, and you say, you better tell me what happened. And you raise, sometimes they don't say, I don't know what happened. I wasn't in there. But when you raise that belt up, well, if y'all don't tell me what happened, everybody gonna get up. And then all of a sudden, well, daddy, well, Mama, see, see, I, I really wasn't in there, but this what happened. But I heard. I heard yeah, yeah, that's what happened. That's what happened. 
And the servant struck out. He struck out. I'm just reading what the word said. And he said, go and spout where he is, that I may sin and threat him. <laughs> I, I just want to come. I just want to come to him. I'm going to bring him to me. And it was told him, saying, behold, he is in daughter. Yeah. Or do them. Do them. That's the way it wrote. D-O-T-H-A-N. Do them. Amen. Amen. Therefore, sent he thy the horses and chariots and a great host. And they came by night and compassed the city about. So once he found out where it was at, they sent all types of war mechanisms yeah. at they sent horses, not one horse, but horses for the prophet. At night. At night. And they spent, sent chariots, not a chariot, but chariots. Why? For the prophet of God, for the man of God. They sent a multitude of things and people. That's divine. Yeah, that should make us open up our eyes. When you confess that you serve the Lord, yes, sir. when you confess that God is your God, when you confess that you see that you got to do some things better, war and rumors of war are going to come at you. And when they come at you, it's not going to be one or two, a little, 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 little lamb. No, it's going to be chariots, plenty of them, and horses. In this day and time, they're going to have guns and numerous of guns, machine guns and Gatling guns yes, all types of shooting guns, amen? Yes, they're going to have people on this side, people on that side, people from all places, white people, black people, Chinese people, Japanese people. You notice how they said blue, black, green, and yellow. It ain't them kind of people. Right. They're going to look just like you and I. Yeah. But they're going to have a mindset that's opposite of you and I. Because yeah. our mindset is locked up on God yeah. and being about God's business. Their mindset is opposition yeah. to where it is that we're trying to go. On, Their intent is to stop us from doing what God has yeah. planted in our hearts to do. Because our hearts are wicked, but God's heart is greater yeah. than our heart. So where my heart is trying to kill me, God is ruling over my heart to save me and use me. Amen. Amen. Maybe I'm in this place. I understand. I understand. It's hard to get this across. They sent him by night. Watch this now. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, verse 15, behold, and host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And he answered, he looked outside, devil. See, he had to go out. Sometimes we step out there to do what God had told us to do, but we're not truly equipped with what's necessary to accomplish the task that God has put before us. And when we step out, we see some things that look bigger than us. We see some things that's stronger than us. We see some things that mightier than us. We see some things that outnumber us. We see some things that look like it can take charge over us. Amen. We step back. And we begin the process of stepping back. Why? Because I'm, I'm reaching for my help. I'm not running, but I can't do this by my help, by myself. Not with the level of understanding that I have. This will be. This looked mighty. Yeah. I wasn't prepared for this when I went to sleep last night. I didn't know it was moving in the middle of my night. But there was some confusion that was in existence in my life that opened up the door for night to show up and enemies to press their way in. Because I wasn't solid in understanding of what I heard the prophet say. Our relationship wasn't as complete as I thought it was. I went on the level that he was on. The king understood, but I didn't understand. The king knew that now he couldn't attack Israel, but he could make an effort to attack me yeah. or my servant. Because before I can get to them, 
I got to get through you. Yes. Before I can get them, I got to get you to bow down. Before I can get your children, I got to get you to get off point, to get off focus. And I'm going to use everybody that's close to you to influence you if I can. I know I can't come directly to you, but whoever that's close to you that say they serve you, I can present myself to them hoping they will abandon you to leave you uncovered. Yes. Amen? Yes. This word is serious because an enemy is attacking the king. And if you're attacking the king, you're attacking his kingdom. If you're attacking, attacking his kingdom, you're attacking his territory. If you're attacking his territory, you're attacking the homes that's within his boundaries. If you're attacking the homes within his boundaries, you're attacking the families within those homes. And if you're attacking those families within those homes, you're attacking the children within those families. Yes. And if you're attacking those children, you're attacking the heritage yes. that God has left yes. for his people. Yes. Your effort is to stop yes. or prevent the people from being who God has chosen for them to be by creating mischief and rift and struggle and strife that can make you almost quit. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Give up. Throw in the towel. Take your life. Yes. Yes. Hold on. I'm sorry. I can, get, I can get all off of it. I can get off of what God wants me to talk about. Amen. I'm sorry. Look at what it says. But the man of God have a responsibility. When you present the issue that's threatening them or threatening you to the man of God, he has a responsibility. Look at Elijah. Look what Elijah said. And he said, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that are with them. Hold it. While you looking at the threat that's presenting itself, yeah. now you done came to the right place. Yes, sir. Because now it's my responsibility to let you know that the threat that's on the outside is not bigger than the support you have on the inside. Yes, sir. It's not bigger than the support that you have to help us through the dangers that's opposing us, the, the issues that's trying to stop us, or, or, or the threats on our future that's trying to be taken away from us is not bigger than what God has planted in your loins. Yes, sir. Amen. If you believe, if you stay focused, if you stay centered, if you stay committed, amen? amen. It's not about this building. It's not about this church. It's not about the preacher. It's about the word. And if we're not here as preachers, then somebody sitting here got to get up here and give the word of God to God's people. Because war is against all of us. It ain't just against the people of Israel or the prophet. It'll take us out too. That's why you have to train up your children to where they understand that the word of God is our seed and foundation. The word of God is what brings you into rightness beyond your faults and your deeds and your issues that was out of order. The word of God is what makes you whole. But you have to get into it. Amen. Because this prophet represents the word of God. It's an example of the word being used in that point in time yeah. like the word came in Jesus
Jesus later on. Yeah. Let me, let me, let me Come on. go on. And Elijah prayed. Watch this now. And Elijah prayed. You know what prayer means? He got in relationship with God. He, he, he put everybody out of the picture. He moved out of his mind all of those chariots and those horses. He even moved his servant out of his mind and he began to talk directly to God. He put blinders on to where he couldn't see on the left and he couldn't see on the right. And all he could see was the spirit and the presence of God that he was asking to walk in. And he began to speak to God. What did he speak to God about? Let's go in here. Let's and he prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee. He didn't talk about the enemy. He prayed in regards to the servant. I pray thee, open his eyes so that he may see. See what, church? <laughs> open his eyes so that he can see what? Family, friends? So that he can see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man in that place, but woman, young man, young woman, young believer, and he saw. What did he see? And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. Why did he see him around about Elijah? Because he didn't see himself as the threat. God was trying to show him, sir, you see them and you know they're a threat, but you know they're coming after Elijah. Now open up your eyes and see the help that Elijah has. And all of the help that Elijah had is laid up for you. Ain't that big? Let me go in here. Go back. I'm just talking now. And he opened his eyes, and the young man, and he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elijah. And when they came down to him, Elijah could have been vindictive. Elijah prayed pray unto the Lord and said, Smite these people. If I stopped there, I would be doing the injustice. Because you would believe that Elijah said, kill them all. Because he says, fight these people. But let's finish what Elijah said. I pray thee with blindness. And he smote them. As soon as Elijah spoke, he smote them. He did what Elijah requested. Why? Because he had purpose in obedience to what Elijah had vision of. Because Elijah was a servant of Jesus. I'm here to support you. Woo! Sidebar, sidebar. I'm going to do a lot of you. Sidebar. I just heard. God just gave me something. He did what Elijah wanted him to do. That means Elijah had dominance in his request that he was making to God. That means God was in tune with Elijah to whatever he asked for, God was going to do it. Woo! In other words, what God is saying to us, when you surrender your life to me and you serve me in obedience, whatever you ask for, that I shall do. That's why he said, what you speak in heaven shall be done on earth. What you speak on earth shall be done in heaven. Why? Because your voice has authority and power over the things he yes. said in the beginning, God gave you power and dominion uh, whoa, to rule over the clouds of the earth, yeah. the fish of the sea, yeah. and over every creeping crawling thing yes. that move upon the face yes. of the earth. That means every demon, every Tom, Dick, and Harry, every other source, every ugly place, every such and such, every issue that want to present itself against you, God gave you power in your force to talk right, to walk right, to move right, to possession yourself right. God gave you power to speak over your errors, speak over your mistakes, speak over your past, speak over your present. And walk to the future yeah. that God has in store for you. Come on. Woo. Yes. Man. Yes. Thank you, God. 
God for the sidebar. Yeah. I really appreciate you talking to me, woman. Yeah. Because you didn't have to yeah. show me that. But the word says, God is our protector. Go to Luke 21 and 17. I know y'all thought y'all would put them Bibles down. But we're going to take just a few more minutes. Can I have them? I was going to take them if you didn't give them anyway. Luke 20 and 17. Big girl, give me a bottle of water out of there, please. 21 and 17. I'm sorry. Pull it up on the screen for me, Andrea. Yeah. Let me touch the mouse. Oh, okay. 21 and 17. Somebody read that for me. Everyone. Everyone? Will hate you. Will hate you? What? Because of me. What? Because of me. What? Everyone will hate you. Everyone will hate you. Because of me. Because of me. When they, when they use that word hate, that means everyone will oppose you. Yes, sir. Everyone will fight against you. Everyone would not see the good in you, they'll see the bad in you. Everyone would look for every little thing that you have done opposite of what you confess and how you confess it. Why? Because they are enemy yes. of yours. Yes. Why though? Why? What the word said, read it. It says everyone will hate you because of me. Because of who? Me. Not because of me. It's using the word me, but it's really talking about because of your relationship God. with God. Yes. Now, your relationship might not be where you want it to be, but it's in your heart that God recognized yes. your relationship because God knows well yes. our heart. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Come on. I receive it. God knows well how much we love Him. Yes. In those secret places, in those moments when everything should make you quit. God know that you begin to talk to him. Yeah. You begin to lean on him. You begin to cry to him. You might not cry in front of me. I might not cry in front of you. Yeah. But when ain't nobody else there but me and God, I cry. Yeah. I cry. Yes. 21 and 17 and 18. I cry out, 2 Kings. I cry out. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Luke. Luke. I cry out to him. I let tears fall. I pull my hair. I, I beat my face on my pillow. I run around in my room. I drop on my face. Why? Because I am through. I'm hurting. And I need help. Amen? Amen. And only God can give me that help. And you shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But there shall not be an hair of your head perish. The enemy don't have authority to not even touch a string of your hair. In other words, the enemy cannot tear you down, even though their effort might be to attack you, if you stay rooted in God. They might take some things from you. They might move some things out of your way, yes. but they cannot tear you down because everything yes. that the enemy stole from you, God going to do what? He's going to give it back to you. Yes, Double in return. Double. <laughs> Amen? Yes. Why would he do that? Because God is our protector. Yes. Amen? Yes. God is our protector. Yes. Not one inch of hair on your head. God is our protector. Why? In Ephesians 6 and 10, go there. Man, I wish we had time. I'm sorry, I talk too much. Because this thing here, man, when God was giving it to me, I, I won't be honest with you. The reason I'm taking so long, because when God was giving it to me, he was, he, was, he was pulling me up after I had been torn down. He, he was reminding me that I'm restoring, I'm replacing, I'm putting back in place. He was telling me that I got place for you but you got to be bold enough to take it. Hello, somebody. Ephesians 6 and 10, watch this now. It was so real. So real. There you go right there. E-P-H-E-S. Ephesians. Come on back there. There you go. 6 and 10. That's all right. See, in the house of God, this is the place where we make mistakes. So we got help. In the midst of us. Amen? That's what it's all about. Six and ten. Amen? Some people good with numbers. But Lord, 
There's other areas that we need help in. Amen. And God here to give us help. Amen. Amen. Six and ten it says, read this. Say, Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord. In the power. See, that, that speaks strong and power is two different things. Yes. Strong means that I can lift heavy objects up. Power means I can speak and knock down buildings. Hello, somebody. So strong means that I can personally do it myself, but power means I can speak to the wind. Let me come on back. Sister Deborah, am I all right? Amen. She's giving me that thumbs up. Amen. Amen. Look at the word. Look at what it said. It says, put on the whole arm of God. Stop. When he said, put on the whole armor of God, it did something to me. Yeah. So that when the day of evil comes, I don't want to miss that part. When the day of evil comes, that means a day, that means a time. A day is not dealing like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's dealing with a time, a period, a season, a time in your life. Amen. A time, a point of of issuing with when things are either gonna go good or gonna go bad, when the day of evil come, yeah. most likely it's gonna be at a time when God has a reward for you, and the enemy wanna show up to try to stop you out, from man. getting that reward. Come it out. comes at a point in time when things begin to look good, the enemy wanna make it look bad. I'm telling you, it comes at a point in time in your life yeah. when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand. Why? Why? Should I be able to stand against the schisms and the schemes and the hustles and the mindset of Satan? Because I put on, hold sister, I put on the full armor of God. What armor? I thought we were good just like this. I put my suit on. Don't I look good? Yeah, yeah. I put this suit on. I said, who else feel this suit out? You should be bad. <laughs> I started looking at myself, Joe. Man, I started looking and saying, oh my God. Something had happened in me. Move. What is it? <laughs> and I already talked to you this morning. So you be quiet. I said, why is this jacket so comfortable? It's so snug. The vest had even got a little snug in the book. Yeah, sure. You hear me? And the pants almost high. Oh, man. Hey, Amen. I said, God been nurturing. Real nurturing. I had to wear this suit because it used to fit big. And I didn't like the way it fit. Somebody help me, though. I didn't like the way it was fit. But right now, it feels just right. One hand, bring that can be a good thing or that can be a bad thing. <laughs> See, I like going to Pacific Future. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like going to all you can hear. And I believe they help me fill my clothes out. <laughs> so what I like doing necessarily not good for me. But it did taste good to me. Y'all help me now. Y'all help me. I feel like I'm by myself now. Amen. But I wasn't there by myself either. So that means some other people got some clothes that don't fit the same way. Amen. You know, we like to share this stuff. We don't like to just take possession all by ourselves. Amen. But watch this now. It said, when the day of evil comes, Here, here's where it took me. Remember, we're talking about the war that's going on and the enemy's attack against you. It says, stand firm. He was, why would I be able, or how would I be able to stand? Sister Troy, how would I be able to stand? Because he said, stand firm then with the belt of truth. Yeah. What? Wait a the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Now watch this now, because it took me some places, and I was like, whoa, whoa, let me look into this. He said, with the belt of, of, of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted, with the readiness that comes from the gospel yeah. of peace. Everything that we're putting on is centered and it comes from the gospel of peace. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. 
Now watch this. He said, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. It didn't say some. It didn't say partly. It said all. Now take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. If you didn't know before, you ought to know now that what you're dealing with, what you're going up against, all you need to do is grab the word of God that speaks to that issue, that speaks to your circumstance, that speaks to your problems, and watch the word go to work. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. How do you watch it? A belt. Let me let me break it down now. A belt is designed to hold clothes up. Like the belt I got on right now, right? I got one on. Hold clothes up. You hear me? Why? Because sometimes our pants are bigger. And even when they fit right, it's just good to have a belt to help fasten it so that it won't shake loose. Because sometimes as you wear clothes and you move about, they get loose. Amen. And it makes them, they don't, they kind of falling down and you keep having to pull them up. So a belt fasten them closer to you. Amen. And then it's designed to hold clothes up so it doesn't trip us up. See, it ain't just because they'll fall down, but because... When they get loose, they can get in our way of walking. They can cause us to trip. They can cause us to fall. Yep. So a belt is necessary to keep our clothes from tripping us. In the same way, God's belt of truth helps us not trip and fall over Satan's lies. That's it. That's yeah. it. That's it. Help us stand against the lies of Satan. Isn't that right? Yeah. Remember what the Bible calls Satan? The yeah. father of lies. Great deceiver. Remember in Matthew 4 and 11, 4 and 1 through 11, when he took Jesus up into a high place yeah. and he began to talk to him, he told him a little bit of the truth, yeah. but he did. He twisted a little lies in it. Amen? Yeah. And, and, but Jesus had to know the word in order to understand the word that was coming in him. He wasn't like Adam and Eve. Don't he? He, he just don't want you to know what he knows. No, no, no. He can't get Jesus like that. He got Eve like that. And he got Adam like that. But God said when he talked to Jesus, he said he know what he said. I know what the word means. Say that again, partner. Man, you don't know what you're talking about. Get on. I already possessed that. That's how Jesus was spoke to him. But God wants us to understand, Satan ain't going to ever come to you in total truth. No, never. It's going to always be a twisted lie in the middle of it because he wants you to deviate from what God has already set in place for you. And that's what the belt, that's what the belt is wrapped around your waist for to help you stay focused on what God's righteousness is all about. That's why Jesus, faith and righteousness go hand in hand. Abraham was found righteous because of his faith. Yeah. You are found righteous by your faith. Your faith is what holds you in line with what God's word is all about. Oh, yeah. It's not about your word. It's not about what you believe. Right. It's about what God has set in place yeah. for you. He already knows you're going to deviate. He already knows you're going to mess up. Well, he set things in place. Yeah. So as you deviate, and you begin to turn, you begin to walk back into. That's why Abraham walked in the righteousness. He, his, his father told him, go go to a place that I'll show you. You don't walk in the righteousness knowing where you're going. You walk in the righteousness following the direction that God gave you. That direction takes you beyond your understanding. Amen? Amen. Excuse me. Hello, somebody. Sing. Twist it all up. It wants you to be twisted up with it. Amen? But God has given you enough to stand up against him. All we have to do is surrender to his word. Be obedient, be patient enough to hear what God has for us and walk according to his ways. Know, know that his word said, if you believe, if you believe that Jesus came to this earth, possessed a body, possessed a body, a human body, 
and allowed the Spirit of God to take total control over him to where he began to speak the things that weren't in existence and it came forth. If you believe that he gave up his life on that cross, he died, they buried him, and he rose again, you can have eternal life. Oh, yes. Amen? Amen. You can have eternal life, which means restoration. Yeah. Putting you back in right place with God. Wow. Amen? Amen? Come on, give God a hand. Amen. say this last part, and I know y'all thought that was it. Give me about three more minutes. Sister Tori, can I use it? Okay, she gave me a nod. Everyone ain't gonna ask you. Sister Tori already gave me permission. So <laughs> you know, hey man, you don't ask too many. You know, it's like it's all about it. No, yes, no, yes. Yes, master. <laughs> hey man, come on, come on, come on. Look at what the word says. God is our defense. God is our fortress. God is our shield. God is our refuge. God is also our hiding place. Amen. Amen. He, if you want to find defenses, go to Psalms 5 and 11. Psalms 31 and 2. Amen. You want to find the fortress of God? Go to 2 Samuel 22 and 2. Or Psalms 1, 44 and 2. You want to know about their shield? Genesis 15 and 1. Amen? Psalms 84 and 11. How about the refuge of God? Deuteronomy 33 and 27. And Psalms 14 and 26. And oh yeah, our hiding place. Psalms 27 and 5, Psalms 32 and 7. I was reading, I was prepared for this message, and God gave me another phase that I want to introduce to us. There was somebody else's study, but it's the five stages of change. And I like what I saw, and I felt like I could say it. Come here, sister. Evangelist, come here for a minute. I'm going to ask for some help in this, and then I'm going to come back as soon as you finish. I want you to read the five stages of change and let God use you for, for a moment. Amen? Go ahead. Stage one. Pre-contemplative stage. I can't see the problem. Persons tend to blame genetics or external factors and to feel hopeless. A stage two. Contemplative stage. It's where I feel stuck. Someday it will get better. Person can feel both anxiety and or excitement in this stage. Stage three, the preparation stage. Still need convincing, ambivalent about changing. Person's plans to take action but has not. Stage four, action stage. The person begins to modify behaviors and surrounding and make a commitment of time and energy to change. Stage five, maintenance stage. The person maintains a serious effort to sustain the positive change. Paul by Portia Nelson wrote this very deep poem. So chapter one, I walk down the street, there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in. I'm lost. I'm helpless. It isn't my fault. It takes forever to find a way out. Chapter two in the days of your life is I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. I fall in again. I can't believe I'm in the same place but it isn't my fault. It still take a long time to get out. <laughs> Chapter three is I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit. <laughs> I know where I am. My eyes are open. It is my fault. I get out immediately. 
Chapter 4, as I walk down the same street, there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. <laughs> Chapter 5, I walk down another street. Yeah. Amen. Amen? The stages of change is just so simple. Don't keep doing the same thing over and over and over again and keep blaming somebody else or blaming yourself, or accepting the truth, but keep on doing the same thing. Yes, yes. At some point in time, you've got to realize that you possess the power and the authority that God has put in you to change the circumstances that exist in your life. No matter how the sidewalk looks, no matter what the street name is called, no matter how deep the hole is, all you got to do is realize when you fell in to get your butt out and walk down another street. Yes, sir. Amen? Amen? Come on, give God a hand. Yes. 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 Children, our grandchildren, and great grandchildren, and all our family members, even the ones that are unsaved, God, don't let nothing happen. 